In the name of Jesus. We declare your majesty tonight, O great prince of peace, governor among the nations, the one who sits in the midst of the cherubims. We make obeisance before you, we rejoice at your presence, and we magnify your name. And tonight we ask, that your glory will fill the hearts of your people and the eyes of our understanding will be quickened will be made alive to see the vastness of the reality that we have in Christ Jesus to see our portion in the great maze of your agenda for humankind and to bask in the limitless supply of grace that you have ordained a spiritual capital to equip us to prosecute destiny. Shine on us afresh tonight, O King of Kings, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Please, if you can, make welcome your neighbor as you grab your seat. God bless you. I will teach for one hour. They will reduce it for... 45 minutes and then we shall pray we began our lecture from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we saw the blueprint that God had in mind for the creature he had conceived the only creature that he designed to appear in his image and to function according to his likeness. So the scripture that registers the biblical premise for the dominion mandate cannot be dissociated from the design of the creature called man. So there are powerful points in that scripture that we need to take individually and dig in order for us to understand the full import of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. So we began talking about the design for man, the first point we raised from that scripture, the image of God. He was created in the image of God. Well, we, we've been trying to understand what that means. And for two sessions, I dwelled on that. But we'll still dwell on that to gain further mileage on what it means when the Bible says that we were created in the image of God. Turn your Bible with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'd like to plead with you to lend me your ears this evening. I'd like to plead with you to avoid every distraction this evening. I have two assignments. The second assignment is dependent on how well I do in the first assignment. First assignment is to bring education to us and then second assignment is to allow the Holy Spirit do what men cannot do in this place. 
Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. There are weighty matters that were raised in the first two verses of Second Corinthians chapter 4. So weighty that deserves some attention, but because of time, we will skip those weighty matters that are captured in verse 2, 2 Corinthians 4. My emphasis is in verse number 3. In verse number 3, it reads, But if our gospel be hid, stay with me. If our message is not penetrating to the extent that we expect. The Bible says it's hid to them that are lost. Are you with me? Then verse 4, which is my emphasis, now reveals the state of the lost. If you came with a baby and you notice that that baby needs ventilation, there is an excessive excitement in the baby's spirit, probably because the presence of God here has touched the spirit. And uh, the baby no longer has the ability to find the delicate balance needed for order. <laughs> Please, we have shelters and areas where that baby can find ventilation. This is the state of the one that is lost. Please follow me. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, the first influence of the God of this world on the lost, where's the first influence? It's on the mind. And the reason why the demonic forces, the princes, the territorial princes, and demonic entities will invest considerably to ensure that your mind is blinded is because of the next statements that are made. Why is it that they labor to ensure that our minds are blinded? Because they are afraid of something. They need to blind the mind lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ in fact are you there? And this Christ that we are speaking about happens to be the image of God should shine on them. The principalities are going to labor to ensure that our minds are perpetually blinded so as to protect us from the light of the glorious gospel. Are you with me? It means that the glorious gospel has a certain kind of light. And if the light of dines into the darkness of the heart of him that is lost, it will create the potential 
for that person to function in the image of God. Because the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, then he gave us insight about the Christ. That Christ is the image of God. So the gospel can shine into the darkness of the human heart and manipulate it in such a way that the heart becomes suitable to bear the image of God. Did you get that? Second scripture. No. Let's, let's not go to the second scripture yet. Go to verse 6. Verse 6. I still want to give us insight into that light as we progress. The Bible says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Do you still remember the book of Genesis? The Bible says, Concerning the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was null and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God began to hover on the face of the waters. And then God now spoke, let there be light. And there was what? Now, this scripture is giving us an insight into what happened in the book of Genesis. It says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Because when you read the book of Genesis, you will think that the light that shined, shined from a certain source into darkness. Just like when you have a torch light and you switch it on in the dark night. It goes from your, the light goes from your torch and it dispenses and dispels darkness. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that it was from within the darkness that the light shined. Not that it shined into it. When God said, let there be light, it was from within that darkness that the light came forth. And that's how you got born again. When you accepted Jesus Christ, your heart was in darkness. It was within that darkness. So this light we're talking about has capacity to undermine darkness in such a powerful way that you will not know that darkness existed in that ecosystem before that time. And the reason, are you there? When that light shined in our hearts, just like it shined in darkness, what it produced, our heart was reconfigured through the presence of that light that was retained upon our hearts to be able to access the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Stop there. Stop there. You know, Apostle Paul is deep. God, God gained a lot of spiritual mileage with the man. Do you still remember that when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, something happened to him? And I don't want to go into the details of what happened to him because it will take time. It would have been wonderful for us to explore those scriptures. It's when we explore those scriptures I can even teach you how rapture will take place. Those are dynamic spiritual things that are revealed in the Bible. When Jesus ascended to the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible says that his countenance began to change. So much so that even his garments became bright and glistering. And the change was not taking place from outside in. The change was taking place from where? From inside out. 
when the change fully took place, there was a light that came from the face of Jesus. Are you still there? Are you still there? Okay. The Bible is telling us that if this light that the gospel has the capacity to convey hits your heart, it will interpret because that light, are you there? Yes. Is coming from the face of Jesus. Just, you know, just like they saw his face beginning to shine. That light that the gospel traps, that is traveling with the gospel, that wants to hit your heart, is the light that is drawn from the face of Jesus. And the moment it hits your heart, there is a knowledge that light now is the basis of spiritual knowledge. A new type of knowledge comes from that light. Can you say what I'm talking about? Can you say that if God wants to walk in your life, if God wants to land in your life, the talmac that God will land is your heart. The instrument with which he will land is light. If you study your Bible, you will discover that God is light. Is that true? If you study your Bible, you will discover that God is love. Is that true? This light and this love that God is, he has been like that before creation began. Is that true? Have you read your Bible and you have seen that God is a consuming fire? Our God is a consuming fire. You, have you read that? This light that God is, in order for us to be able to appreciate this light, from the realm that God dwells, when God sheds that light that he is, the impact of that light on you is knowledge. Spiritual knowledge, the knowledge that comes from the Holy Ghost is the interaction, is what we derive from that light. So you will hear the scripture says that the entrance of his word giveth light. Then he knows you will not understand it from that level. Then he now breaks it down. And says, he giveth understanding to the simple. There is spiritual knowledge that comes anytime the light that flows from God hits your heart. It converts it to knowledge. So the journey of spiritual knowledge is the journey of light. Are you there? So when this light hits your heart, it will give birth to what? The knowledge that was of God that was trapped in that glory that you saw that was radiating on the face of Jesus. The knowledge of that glory will register on your heart. If God is doing business with you there, a lot of things he will do to your heart because that's going to be the powerhouse and the engine room from whence he operates. I think you are, coming close, you are coming closer to me now. A human being called man, are you there? Is a vessel that will reflect anything that is on his heart. I know you don't believe that, but give me time. Should I say it again? A human being is a vessel that will reflect everything and anything that is on his heart. In fact, when God was training Samuel the prophet, God told Samuel, he said, do not look on his outward countenance. Because Samuel was about to rise up 
to anoint somebody that was not ordained by God. You see, you, see, you are looking at the wrong things. The reason why you were moved is because you saw his physique. You saw his chest. You saw his biceps. He's been laboring in the gym. So you like the way he looks. He has the look of a king. You are wrong. Then God now gave Samuel some education and said, God, he does not look on the outward, but he looks on the heart. Are you there? And then the scriptures now went further to say that as a man thinketh in his heart, that is how he is. Everything that's going to flow from his life is going to come from that inner chamber. The Bible also says, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. And in the Hebrew, the word translated issues is the same word translated, is the same word for boundary, boundary. You know, when you buy a land, you make a fence to create a boundary so that your neighbor will know the extent to which he can walk around. You create a barricade so that it will be impossible for someone to commit trespass. The Bible says, out of your heart determines the boundaries of life. It means God can look at your heart as you are seated now. He knows where you will end because your boundaries are in your heart. Your heart is like chromosomes. You know chromosomes? I discovered, not recently, since 2018, and I started having white hair. It's 2018 that I discovered it. But it was written in my chromosomes since I was born. But time just revealed what was written in the chromosomes. That's how your heart is. You will fulfill exactly what is on your heart now. And if God wants to help you, wants to change your possibility, what he does is that he attacks your heart and he, he conducts a surgery on your heart so that your boundaries can be extended. Are you still following? So that's God's center. That, that's his style mark. That's where God will begin his operations. You will reflect everything that has saturated your heart. So you see, in the labor of the gospel, God reaches for the heart, not the head. Because we are going to reflect what is in the heart. It is from the heart that your mind is influenced. And I don't have time to draw the diagram of a heart. Not this heart, but what the Bible calls heart. I don't have time to draw that diagram in this class. But it would have been necessary to enhance our understanding. Are you there? If the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It means that your heart can think. Hmm? Let me leave you. It means your heart can think. So the organ that the Bible calls the heart is inclusive of the human mind. Do you get it? The Bible says, love the Lord with all thy strength, with all thy heart, and with all thy might. It means that your heart can love. Is that true? Your heart can think. Your heart can love, and we know that the love organ is your emotion. So your emotion, too, is part of what is called the heart. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon makes some statements. Stay with me. Solomon decided to conduct an experiment. He wanted to know the meaning of life. 
And he doesn't want to use questionnaires to get feedback from people. He used his, himself as the test case. So if he wants to know about wine, about alcohol, Solomon will now go and drink and get drunk for some time. Then when he recovers, he will write about drinking, the outcome of drinking. Are you following what I'm talking about? <laughs> if Solomon wants to write about women, he will go and marry and he, he will have an Egyptian girlfriend, he will have a Kenyan girlfriend, he will have a Rwandan girlfriend, he will test them. Then, after testing on Nigeria, he will have from Nigeria. In fact, he will have two from Nigeria. One from the north, one from the south. Test somebody from South Africa. He will go to... Um, Ethiopia, towards the horn, he will look for a woman in the desert there. After he has tested all these women, then he will now write, say, a, a woman. It's not, you are not following me. <laughs> he is not getting opinions from people. This is Solomon. He wants to know wisdom. He wants to know it. And he has submitted himself as the guinea pig that will be used to fetch this wisdom. He wants to know it experientially. Are you there? So, when it came to wine, Solomon said, and I said to myself, I will test my heart with wine. If, if, you, if you listen to that statement, you will see that Solomon was attempting to exercise his will. This was a personal, internalized decision to exercise his will to test wine. Are you with me? Meanwhile, the way it is written is, I said to my heart, I will test, I will test you with wine. So that faculty of your soul called your will is also part of the heart. That's not all. Are you with me? Picture what I'm teaching in your mind. Then, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 10, I believe verse 20. Let me check for that verse. I did not know that I will be going this far. Hebrews 10, 20. Are you there? Mm, the scripture I'm looking for says, purging your heart from an evil conscience. Is that 20? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Give me that scripture. It says, let us draw near with a true heart. How are you drawing? What is the organ with which you draw near? The heart. Okay, so let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil what? It means that the, the conscience is part of the heart. See, you are not following me. Your mind, your will, your emotion, that's your soul. Your spirit has three parts. The conscience, the fellowship, and the intuition. Your mind, your spirit, your soul, plus the conscience of your spirit is what forms the heart. Are you there? Now, this is the thing. Your mind is the strongest organ 
of that heart. So when, when Satan wants to deceive you, what it does is that it comes to manipulate your mind. If Satan manipulates your mind, you are in Satan's captivity. Your emotion is not logical. You can even know that somebody is bad, but you love him. Sisters, is that? You know, he's an armed robber. He's a criminal. He has killed people before, but you love him. You see, your emotion is not logical. And your emotion can unbalance you and get your entire heart to surrender to a thing that is a lie. And so, the object of the gospel, the goal of the gospel is to shed the light of Christ on the heart. Now, you can now understand the scripture that says, if our gospel be hid, it is hidden unto them that are lost. The principalities are trying to blind the mind. Because as long as the mind is blinded, it will be difficult for the light of the gospel to pierce through. Did you get it? Okay. Now, I need to show you the situation of a fallen man. A man that the Bible calls lost. And how he is different from us. Even though we have one nose. We have two ears. We have one mouth. But we are different. And I need to show you in what sense we are different. Is that clear? Come with me. I think the first scripture we will deal with is Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Still trying to take us further on the subject of the image of God. For man is created in the image and after the likeness of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Give me verse 20 on the screen. It says, for the invincible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Hey, the way King James renders this scripture makes it complex. Do you know what he's saying? First of all, in order for you to understand what he's saying, there are two arms in creation. The invincible creation and the visible creation. Is that clear? Now, he's saying that every single thing that is in the invincible creation is illustrated in the visible creation. Even things like God's eternal power even things like the concept of God's Godhead, the counsel of God, of, of, of God, is illustrated in the visible creation. So that creation becomes the greatest evangelist that points to God. And on the account of this, any man that walks this world without acknowledging God doesn't have any excuse anymore because the invincible things that are, belong to God have been illustrated in the things that were captured in the physical creation. Did you get that? This is the basis upon which you cannot say you did not know there was God. Because if you interacted with creation, it should have suggested to you that there is, this creation resulted from a creator. You know, I was in Europe some time ago, and some young, intelligent guys were trying to show me how that this creation um, is a result of 
entropy. If you read chemistry, you will know what entropy means. <laughs> and uh, they are not aware that I'm a scientist. So when they finished, I now took a book. Can you see this, my jota? Do you like the design on it? And I asked them, can this kind of design come without a designer? They said, no, that you need to take it to the printers, you need to do typesetting, you need to do that. I said, that's great. Then, I showed them the current discoveries about the human cell. And the current discoveries about the human cell suggest that each human cell is a machine. If you say that all of these detailed articles of creation came out of entropy, came out of a big bang, maybe there was a bomb that exploded, and that bomb, instead of destroying, the bomb now created the design. If that's what you're saying, you, are, you need psychiatric attention. Because if there is design in it, then there is a designer. No man can be with any excuse that passed through this corridor and does not acknowledge that there is God because God advertised everything about his reality in the visible creation. That's what this scripture is saying. So the greatest evangelist is not right hand bunker. It is creation. You've been with it. It's, it's a mystery. Once upon a time, I was flying into um, the city of Lagos in my nation, and the, the day was giving up its strength for the night to take over. And I saw the color of the sky in a way I've never seen it before. I just began to confess my sin. I said, God. <laughs> because, are you there? I said, if I've offended you in any way, have mercy. Because I saw the majesty of the designer of the creation. I, I, I had to bow before him. So you understand this verse now? Let's go to the next verse. Because that, when they knew God, glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Can you see? What happened to the fallen man happened to him in the heart. The first symptom about the fallen man is that he became vain in his imagination. He became foolish in his heart and his heart ended up becoming darkened. That's where the darkness is. So, and if your heart is darkened, guess what? What you will reveal in your character, what you will reveal in your lifestyle will be the darkness that has been factored where? In your heart. Because like I said, man is a creature that is like a prism that will reflect what has taken hold of the internal organ of his heart. You don't need to take him to school. You don't need, whether you put him in prison as an unbeliever so that he doesn't interact with the real world, when he comes out of prison, the darkness that is in his heart is what he will reveal. It's so, okay, he's like this because of peer pressure. It's like this because of the trends, the current trends. It's like this because of social media. It's like this because of YouTube. You are looking at the symptom. The real situation here is that there is darkness trapped in the heart of a man and all of these manifestations are the outlets through which the darkness is manifested. So the cure for man cannot be improvement. It cannot be rehabilitation. Are you there? It must strike at the core of his being. It must have presence where? In his heart. And just like the Bible says, it is a heart that retains your boundary. The things that you can do, the things that you can become, is registered in the way your heart is. Your definition is 
the way you think. So if God wants to change you to reflect him, he has a lot of business to do on your heart. Are you there? So the light of the glorious gospel was designed to shine upon the heart so that a new set of knowledge, renewal in knowledge, calibration in knowledge, will begin to come up so that you have the capacity to reflect things that are not captured in the fallen nature. Are you seeing the theater? Second scripture. Genesis chapter 6. Go with me quickly. Genesis chapter 6. The state of man had changed because of his rebellion to God. And Genesis chapter 6 is a critical scripture that shows how man began to evolve in the light of this new nature he has contacted on the account of his rebellion to God. So we see a portrait of what man has become because of his rebellion to God in the book of Genesis chapter 6. Are you still with me? We have not started the lecture. I'm just, these are build-ups just to bring you to a certain level of knowledge. Then from that point, we can gain mileage. Are you with me? So, and it came to pass. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. And they took them, and they took them wives of all they chose. You will not understand what this scripture means if you have not read the book of Genesis chapter 4. Are you with me? This is a critical scripture. Let me leave it. We can't go to Genesis 4 and come back to Genesis 6. So let us assume that Genesis 1, 2. Forget about it. Meanwhile, because of Genesis 1, 2 that we cannot touch, this is how God sees man now. Because of Genesis 1, 2. You know, there are two races here. The sons of men, the daughters of men, and the sons of God. These are two races. Guess what happened? These two different races now decided to mingle. Are you there? The moment they mingled, God made a comment. Oh, you did not see it. No, no, no. no. Come with me. Ah, no, we can't, we can't go to four. Just leave it. But they mingled. Uh, God established a principle in the book of Genesis chapter 1, which is the principle of separation. You know, the Bible says he divided the day from the night. That's separation. Are you with me? He divided the land from the sea. That is separation. Are you with me? The principle of separation was established in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Because God wants us to operate in the principle of separation. And when we say separation, that's, that is the Old Testament idea of the concept of holiness. Because holiness is separation unto God. And what that means is that you allow God as the only personality 
that you yield to so that it is only him that can have expression through your life. When you yield to God, God will begin to amplify his preferences and the dynamics of his nature. And then you will find yourself behaving more and more like God. And if you decide to behave like the devil, God inside of you will begin to quarrel. Then that thing that you did is not captured within my nature. He will expose sin within you so that you can deal with it because you have violated your separation. Do you get that? So what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 6 is a violation of separation. When that violation of separation took place, the result became a mixture. And when the mixture found expression, this is what God said in verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man, for that he is flesh. See, this fall that began in Genesis chapter 3 had come to the final state of the fall. It, it, he fell and now he's flesh. That's the last point. And the God of heaven declared that man had become flesh the moment man violated the principle of separation. Now, let me show you some consequences of he has become flesh. Go to verse 5. Consequences. Quickly, 5. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, can you see imagination again? Of the thoughts, can you see thoughts again? Of his what? Heart was evil continually. It means that the result of the fall was that another influence had taken over the heart of man. And it is that influence that man is going to reflect. Because I told you that man is a vessel that will reflect any influence that masters his heart. So at this point now, the influence that masters the heart of man is the influence of darkness. So his thoughts and his heart was filled with evil continually. So at this point, there is no form of, of rehabilitation that can help this entity. This entity will need someone that can give him a different heart. So can you see the state of an unbeliever? So now, you that you are a believer, the light of the gospel of God has shined on your heart. You have accepted Christ Jesus and Christ happens to be the image of God. It means that there has been a restoration of God's image in you. You are not following me. The unbeliever and what the devil is desperately trying to achieve with the unbeliever is to change his image so that he no longer operates like God, but he operates like something else. He reflects something else. So he carries the image of another thing. Carries the image of darkness. Carries the image of dimensions that are secured in, in hell. Two, two little kids, they were 13 years old. And they went to visit a certain sorcerer. And the sorcerer told them, why do, why, why do you go to school? He said, we're going to school to get educated so that when we graduate from school, we can have jobs and we'll be financially independent. So the sorcerer told them, who told you you need school to have money? He said, wow, we've not heard of that. You don't need school. Go and give two of you, go, bring the head of your mother. 
to me. And the moment you bring that head, I will do something and what you are going to school to get, you will get it now. So these two guys, 13 years old, they were discussing and coming up with strategies on how to deliver their mother's head, 13 years old. One succeeded. Yes. Because he is carrying a different image. He looks like a different realm in the, in the spirit. He will illustrate and advertise the values, the dynamics of that realm. Are you there? One succeeded, brought the mother's head. It's just that the police now apprehended. That was how the story came out. But he was able to strategize sufficiently and took the mother out. And if not that the police caught him with the head in a sack, even his father would not have known that he was the one that took his mother out. Can you imagine the kind of intelligence that a 13-year-old boy now has that he could take out an experienced woman? It was not the boy. It was the influence that was attached to his heart. That influence was responsible for his thoughts, was responsible for his imaginations. He saw visions on how he had intellectual visitations on how to take out his mother and he fulfilled it are you, are you following me that's what happens when your heart comes into the domain of another influence you begin to reflect that influence you begin to reflect that realm you begin to reflect the ideals of that civilization So the reason for the gospel is that it's the only avenue through which Christ, that happens to be the image of God, can be restored to man. You are already in trouble because you were created with the possibility of carrying the image of God. That's one of the reasons why Satan is attracted to you. He doesn't want you to carry that image. He wants you to carry his own image. Because he was not given license to create. So he needs to borrow. He needs to borrow and destroy everything that is in the similitude of the image of God. That can carry God. That can reflect God. That can reflect the realm of God. The glory of God. And he wants to use that vessel. Distort his image. Replace the image of God with his own image, even the devil. And then he's the one that gives you thoughts, gives you promptings, gives you ideas, gives you... Then you begin to operate like him. Are you there? Notice that there was an agenda that Satan wanted to operate, to, to, to carry out in heaven. Angel Lucifer. And unfortunately for him, according to the book of Revelation chapter 12, Michael restrained him. Michael bound him. Michael cast him out of heaven. He was casted out of heaven and he was supposed to go to the underworld but earth is in the middle of heaven and the underworld. So when Paul spoke about heaven, he was standing on the earth and he said, heaven is above, but hell is where? It's beneath. Meanwhile, that spiritual geography, it doesn't mean like this. You know, we are on the equator now. Is that true? Someone in South Africa, the direction you'll be pointing as above is different from what you are pointing. So when the Bible says heaven is above, it's not... Are you following what I'm talking about? So he was on course from heaven to hell. 
but the midpoint is earth. So he fell into the earth. When he fell into the earth, he possessed that serpent. Brought deception into the earth. Deceived the woman. Occasioned the fall of man. Then began his own reign in the earth. He's using the license of man. As long as God allows man on this earth, Satan will still be operating where? On this earth. And his judgment to hell, his judgment to petition, will be stayed until man's rentage on earth expires. So he came, took over man's authority, began to live in man's dominion, and extended his shelf life of relevance. Meanwhile, heaven has already dealt with him. Are you with me? Began to manipulate men and to adjust men to carry his image. He becomes the principal factor that is responsible for their imagination. Just like the Bible says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. He is the one that enlightens the eyes of understanding of the people that believe not. Because they are under the influence of the prince of the power of the air. Are you there? Are you there? So when he took over Adam's authority, because Adam was the master of the earth, something happened. The vision that he wanted to establish in the heavens for which he aspired to be domiciled in Zion, in God's administrative headquarters. He couldn't fulfill that vision in heaven. So he found an apostle on earth. He found Cain. He began that thing, that project with Cain. So if you want to know what the devil had in mind for advancing into heaven to take over Zion, the same vision is what he began to implement through Cain. Because human beings began to become carriers of his image. So it is his dreams, his glory, that he begins to empower them to establish upon the face of the earth. Are you following me? Are you sure? Okay. If you are sure, I can risk. I can take a risk to open Genesis chapter 4. Let me show you the vision he is implementing. Stay with me. My real scripture is in Philippians chapter 2. That's where my scripture is. For the night. Cain became his first apostle. That yielded to him. And the moment he yielded to him. He changed his image. Gave him the idea of murder. That murder was possible. No example of a murderer had ever existed. But the creative thoughts. That led him into murder. Was fired into him by his new source his new source was satan and he was carrying satan's image and he was doing satan's will and even though he did not see anybody murder before him just like satan did not see anybody commit iniquity and god said iniquity was found in satan in the beginning nobody tempted him Oh, you are not following him. No. He, he was not tempted. He, he... Are you there? So, iniquity was... He, he pioneered it. He violated the principles that regulated his estate. And when he violated it, he came into a reality that was outside of God. Now, he wants to colonize the entire creation of God with that reality he entered that is outside of God. And Cain was the first apostle that afforded Satan the opportunity of expression. 
he was now expressing Satan and he pioneered murder after pioneering murder are you there let me show you what happened a civilization began in the earth who is there with me Genesis chapter 4 give me verse 16 on the screen a civilization began in the earth a strange one after killing Abel are you there what he did thereafter was that he went out from the presence of the Lord you know the meaning of that it means I no longer want to be influenced by God I don't want God things I don't want God ways I don't want to know about his commandments his laws no I have left his presence and when he left went out from the presence of the Lord he went to establish what he dwelt in the land of Nod. he became the father of a new civilization in the earth and that civilization was established apart from God are you following where did he get these ideas from when you read the Bible do you think do you do you say ah, what where did he get the idea from to set up a different civilization a civilization that will exist apart from God the restraint that God brings will no longer be captured in that civilization because his imagination is now darkened the thoughts of his heart are evil they are coming from a different source he is just he is just reflecting the source that is connected to so yes so he has a different image it's no longer the image of God so he went and set up he left where people people that are still hoping that God will come there were such people on the earth at the time don't worry I will show you he removed from them and went and set up another city he set up the city in the land of north in the east of Eden yeah go on quickly go on quickly and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bear Enoch and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son even Enoch so he's building a city now it means that after he gave birth to that son some other people began to like his philosophy to operate apart from God so they joined themselves to him and then they then decided that we will set up a civilization and you know the thing about this civilization it is going to run how apart from God oh my god you are not with me okay <laughs> let me let me leave you this city they will have schools in them and the curriculum of the school there will be nothing about God in the curriculum does this sound like our generation oh you you don't know that is the same spirit that operated in Cain that has come back now I don't have time I would have taken you to the New Testament and then I will show you the three examples that God told us to be weary of in the last days the first one he mentioned was Cain that's why I'm coming here he said no Let us set up a system that exists how apart from God he knew his wife gave birth to a son Enoch at the time that son was born people from other villages said we are tired of God and they came and joined themselves to him the idea was now to set up a city next verse quickly and unto Enoch I would like us to count the generations was born Irad and Irad begat Mehujael, and Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. Please count how many generations? No, 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 no. Count from Cain, then Enoch, then how many generations? Oh, we are, we are, we are not following. Six. Six generations leading to Lamech 
Lamech was another pioneer. Just like Cain was. Lamech was another apostle. What did Lamech do? Lamech took him two wives. Lamech was the one that pioneered polygamy. You are not... Are you, are you following? Now, this is a civilization that is established apart from God, but it took seven, six generations to arrive at polygamy. Satan had the right of way, but he needed to fight morality. He needed to fight the concepts of alignment. And then to make it just like he was able to convince Cain to murder that murdering. You know, you know, you know. He was, they were living in a godless society, but they still had one wife. All of them. <laughs> Until Satan was determined to manifest his image on another gear. He found Lamech. And after playing with his mind, playing with, he convinced him that it was possible to manage two women. So Lamech was the pioneer. He brought another dimension into the civilization. He married two wives. Are you there? The name of one was Ada. The name of another one was Zilla. Now, what is the meaning of Ada? Ada. Ada in the Hebrew means adornment to make beautiful so that you can entice stay with me Don't, you are you you think i'm talking about a, a woman no 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 how many of you know z world do you know z world most of you are victims to it that's other it was made beautiful to you so it has enticed you now it has bound your soul if you don't have your moment with Z World in one day, it's as if something is missing. That departure that is taking place in your life is as a result of Ada. So Satan will come, and when he comes, he will he will make something beautiful to you. That thing is not God, though, but he will make it beautiful. Say, what is wrong in watching movies? You know? There's nothing wrong. But there's wrong, something wrong when you are addicted to it. There's nothing wrong in eating food. But when you become addicted to it, there's something wrong. It means a God, something that can make you disobey God. A stronghold has been formed. So many of you prefer Z-World to prayer. Even if the Holy Spirit is calling you to spend a moment of prayer with Him. Ada. Something was made beautiful to your soul such that when it released an anchor and bound your soul you could not detect it at that that's the first wife of Lamech a civilization is building are you there yes. go go to the next one and Ada bear Jabba he was the father of such that dwell in tents and such as had cattle. Stop there. People used to sleep outside before Jabal came. When Jabal came, <laughs> are you there? He began shelter, the shelter, real estate business, and all of that. Now you are forgetting. You are forgetting the foundation. These guys are running a civilization that is apart from God. Now, every system they are putting in place, if you are part of it, it makes it more difficult. It takes you further away from God. It makes you more difficult for you to ever collide with God again. Don't forget that at the back of your mind. So, I have a question for you. Is it bad to dwell in a tent? It will also surprise you that Jabal was the one that created employment first. Employment. He's the one that started rearing cattle. Is employment bad? Employment is not bad, but many people here, it is because of their jobs they can't serve God. 
I don't want to go into. Is it bad? I used to work in the oil industry. I used to fast and walk. I used to pray on site, offshore. I used to pray on tanks, on petroleum tanks. Because I know that there's a difference between my job and my work. My job will give me salaries. My work will give me rewards. My job only exists in time. My work will shape my eternity. So in my own opinion, my work is superior to my job. So while I'm doing my job, I must ensure that I'm doing my work. Now, listen. Are you there? I say, are you there? To be an operative in the oil industry is very tasking, mentally, physically. Almost every other weekend, I'm there on the plane going to the mission field. Meanwhile, weekends are the times you sleep from morning till night because you've not been sleeping. But even those weekends, I'm going to the crusade ground because I know that my work is more important than my job. If you have a job that you are doing and you want to keep pace with your work, it means you cannot escape a very busy life. You will still clock in the number of prayer hours you are supposed to do in the night. You have to discipline yourself if you know that apart from your job, you have your work. Jabba created a job for self-support. Prior to this time, God was the one that was responsible for their supplies. Now that they have left the presence of God, they have to create jobs so that they can support themselves. Are you see? And there is a temptation for you to think that your job is God's means of support. You can now see your job and call it your God because you believe that the, all of the support that God wants to bring to your life, that's you. So the day God wants you to resign that job so that you can focus on your work full time, it will be difficult for you to take that decision because of the place that you have placed that job. It is now a God in your life. It is, is it possible for you to look to God for supplies beyond your job? Is it possible for you to extend your faith about your sustenance beyond what you do? Is it possible for you to begin to do business with God in sacrificial giving, in tithing, in givings by instructions so that you can create capacity for more stewardship than your job allows? I'm asking you questions. So Jabal created jobs for self-support so that they will not have any need to lean on God for supply. Is that what your job is? A support system that has made you faithless. You can no longer trust God. You are a victim of Jabal. Can we go on? Next verse. You can't exercise your faith again. Your faith is only is tied to your job that at the end of the month, I will have some shillings. Jabal has bound you. And that's why you cannot give sacrificially because there's no faith. Your giving is an act of faith. Are you there? Next scripture. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and the organ. This guy created music. Don't forget the principle of the city. Are you there? Why did he create music? He created music for self-entertainment. Prior to that time when Adam was encountering God in the cool of the day, there was a harmony in the spirit. And the music that God was... How many of you have had this experience? You woke up and then one song was playing inside. Yes, that is the... That's the song of songs. That's the song that the Holy Spirit sings. It's a sign of spiritual health. 
That is the means of entertainment that God has to support you, to, to, to sustain you. But when they lost that inner music, what happened? Juba went and created. Now, the fact that we use the guitar today should not be a replacement for the inner sound. I'm talking about a civilization that Satan created. Are you there? So he created music for self-entertainment. Jabal created employment for self-support so that they won't need to depend on God. Are you there? They are creating substitutes for everything that is in God so that they can live independent of God. Who gave them these ideas? So they are reflecting another image. Are you seeing it? Okay, go on. And Zillah, the second wife, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificial in brass and iron. This is the first guy that created weapons of mass destruction. Tubal Cain. Our security happens to be in God. But when Tubalcain lost his security in God, what did he do? To replace that security, he created AK-47. Are you there? They are creating replacements for everything in God. For, so for security, he, 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 he makes available weapons. Weapons. When a man loses his security in Christ, he begins to think that his security can be in material possession. So there's a certain kind of car he wants to drive. In order for him to have a sense of being, that man has lost his center of spiritual gravity because Christ is supposed to be the basis of your security. In this day of error, many preachers are afraid to come and point out this is what the Bible says. This is the truth. This thing that is reigning in the town, it doesn't have its roots in scripture. And the reason why many preachers won't want to operate like that is because they know the people that are pushing these false doctrines are dangerous people. So in order to stay away from danger, let us, let us keep quiet, you know, and just be preaching the one God has given us. Meanwhile, the Bible reveals that every believer has been called to partake in the defense of the faith. When you lose your security, you become another kind of man. You begin to create your own weapons to preserve yourself. It's just a proof of the fact that you have lost your security in crisis. There are many replacements that satan want to make available to you that will stand in the way of the reality which is in god that's what is being developed can you see that so go to verse i i don't have time to talk about nama no i spoke about ada i did not speak about the meaning of zilla and i did not speak about the meaning of nama because of time Jump to 25. 24. Meanwhile, I don't want to explain this scripture. Go 24, 24, 24. Oh my God. Sorry, let me just open my own Bible. Genesis chapter 4, verse 24. Okay, go to 25. It says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, she said, had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. That means Seth was the replacement of Abel. The thing that God wanted to do through Abel 
have been transferred to to set do you get that okay next verse and to set to him also were born a son and he called his name Enos then began men to call upon the name of the Lord this was where prayer was discovered prayer the technology called prayer now so so wait 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 you will your concentration will be lost can you see that are you there you know we read genesis chapter 6 and genesis chapter 6 verse 1 says it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth those guys that the bible calls men are the people in Cain's city Cain's city grew multiplied do you realize You will think that that city that is apart from God will wither. What happened to the city? It's multiplied. Okay. The other people that want to be stuck to God, they want to be praying to God, have mercy. Another set of people were there like that. Their own civilization did not multiply. They were a little sanctuary. Meanwhile, the guys that were in the godless society. So if you think that because many people gather somewhere, God is there, you are joking. You are joking. In the New Testament, you know, Apostle John was the prophetic apostle you know it was him that received the book of revelation apostle peter was the evangelistic apostle he was the one that opened the gate to the jews on the day of pentecost and the gate to the gentiles in colonial's house he, he was still fishing so the most prominent grace on peter's life was evangelistic the most prominent grace on paul's life was teaching and the most prominent grace on john's life was the prophetic it is John that now gave that city that Cain built under the inspiration of the devil. He gave it a name in the book of John. He called it the world. The world. Yeah, that's that city. It has grown. It has permeated every facet of human endeavor. It is spreading. It has influenced governments. It has influenced nations. It has influenced cultures. The, the thing that Cain established has gone viral. And the reason why they could sustain the civilization and they kept building it, kept building it, kept building it till this generation is because Satan was able to borrow some men and put his image within them. The reason why the civilizations of God in the earth are scanty is because we are not as committed to God as they are as committed to Satan. They were able to bring, download a full-blown civilization that has permeated our schools, that has permeated the banking system, it has permeated the way business is done globally, it has permeated, that civilization that Cain established, it has permeated every single space because of the commitment they had to Satan. Satan was inspiring them. Satan was giving them imaginations. Satan was giving them thoughts. They were reflecting the image of Satan. This is the time. Because the Bible speaks. Are you there? There are things I don't want to say because if we were ministers, I would have gone far. Do you realize do you realize that the people, they, this system took place, all these things took place in chapter 4. Then in chapter 5, another dimension came. In chapter 6, 
they now mingle themselves with the sons of God. Can you see that? The, the, the darkness. Should I tell you something? I know you will not believe it, but just hear me out first. Hmm? God never created any wild animal. Just in case you didn't hear me very well, let me say it again. God never what? Created any wild Three symptoms. There are three things that happened when the daughters of men mingled themselves with the sons of God. Three things. In fact, it is possible that you will not be able to understand the entire Old Testament if you don't understand Genesis chapter 6. But I am not ready for that trouble now. But I just want to show you some highlights. Okay? Because I have not explained who the sons of God are yet. And I will not in this lecture. As we go on, in kingdom come we will get to a point where the technology we will download the technology of how god want, how god will save kenya how god will save rwanda how god will save south africa there are so many things god we we have not come to that level where we can receive blueprints because we are looking for what is not lost but in this day, God is focusing his church on the center and the circumference, on the extent and the limit of divine revelation, which is Christ. Christ. Christ is refocusing his church. Uh, are you with me? When the sons of God mingle themselves with the daughters of men, which is an abomination, it produced three results. First of all, the Holy Ghost says that his spirit will no longer strive with man. That means the spirit of God was striving with men. There was a way, there, there probably was a way of escape that God wanted to make available. But the moment the mingling took place, the Holy Ghost. That's the first effect of that mingling. Are you there? Second effect is in verse 5. What is in verse 5? The effect of the mingling was that wickedness, the dimension, the capacity of wickedness in man. That is, I'm talking about creative ideas in wickedness. Because the thoughts of their heart was evil continually. Third effect of the mingling is in verse 11. Can you give me verse 11? The earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. This was where wild animals emerged. Don't believe me. I will show you another scripture to confirm it. This is where wild this this is this is when lions began to be, became carnivores. There is a statement you are missing there, which is corrupt. That is what the Bible calls in the New Testament the bondage of corruption. Romans chapter 8. Have you read it before? For the earnest expectation of the creation. Have you read it before? No, don't worry that's where we are going so there's the third consequence was that the bondage of corruption set in and violence filled the earth and just to confirm my statement that i said there was no wild animal created on earth let me give you a scripture to confirm that then we go to the new testament and then you will see how the bondage of corruption and how this violence and how the civilization that satan has built will be swallowed up are you there? 
Um, Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11 speaks about the millennial reign of Christ, where Christ will be the governor among the nations. The symptoms of his reign, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6, so that let me go straight to the point. When Jesus becomes the, reign, the, the king reigning in the earth, this is, this, this is, the earth will experience what we call factory reset. To the original they get it and then this is what will be obtainable the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and a and, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them the child will lead lion yeah go on lion will be playing with with goats and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw, straw, straw like an ox. That's how it was before. Factory reset. It was that mingling that gave birth to the bondage of corruption and what? Violence. Are you still with me? Can we move on now? Let us go to the book of Romans. Do you realize, are you with me? You are not with me. Do you realize the law of the Bible? If it is an angel that causes a problem, it will be an angel that will solve it. If it's a man that causes a problem, you know, it was a man that rebelled. God had to become man to solve the problem. If it's God that causes the problem, it will be God that will solve the problem. But the problem we see in the book of Genesis chapter 6 was caused by the sons of God. And that problem can only be solved by the sons of God. That is why in the New Testament the Bible speaks about another generation of the sons of God that will come to undo the things that the first sons of God did. Are you following now? You are getting now? Okay, so Romans chapter 8. Let me read to you. Romans chapter 8. Then I will show you what the Spirit of God does inside the heart of a believer. The activity of the Spirit of God to make you one of the sons of God. Say, as many as believed him to them, gave him the authority, the power, the potential. To become so when you get give your life to christ you now have the potential to become the sons of god but the bible says that as many as are led by the spirit if you have come to that point in your growth with god where it is only the spirit of god that can lead you the way jesus was satan came and said turn these stones to bread he said i'm sorry man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god I, I, don't, I don't do anything because I'm hungry. I only do things because God spoke. The true sign of the sons of God is that they are led by the Holy Ghost. Are you still with me? Okay, stay with me. I read one scripture to you. It is obvious that my Philippians chapter 2, I cannot read it today. I will end with Romans chapter 8. That means my, my lesson today did not come the Bible is deeper than you think and there are many things that will have been concealed for many years that God is beginning to unravel so that we can walk in the fullness of his stature in our time Romans chapter 8 are you there I will end with this scripture I will show you something
Romans 8:18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It means in order for the Holy Spirit to destroy certain things that we have been used to which are captured in the nature of fallen man. Maybe you've been used to fornication and the spirit of fornication has been trafficking on your life and God wants to deliver you from that spirit so that his spirit can be the only spirit that has dominance over your life. Part of what God will do is that he will approve some dealings. These dealings I'm talking about are sufferings. Sufferings that he approved you to go through. And the reason for the suffering he approved is so that that appetite that has been developed by reason of sin can lose his ability to control you. Because what Satan wants to achieve is control, is manipulation. So in order for him to undo that program, he allows you to go through some process of setback. But you are going through the process of setback for a positive reason. Because he said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. He says, if it's this glory I want to reveal in you, then this suffering is not, not even a factor. But Satan will attempt to make that suffering be a major issue. That will even, he will sow the idea of you rebelling against God because of that suffering. But the reason why God is allowing you to go through that process is so that he can disarm your appetites. And then usher you into a certain glory. Are you following me? Next verse. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation or the unveiling of the sons of God. The reason why creature is waiting for the sons, stay with me, Stay with me. Stay. Are you there? You know, the, the sons of God were the ones that were responsible for the bondage of corruption. I told you there were three consequences that resulted from the mingling. And one of them is corruption. The second one is violence. Read next verse. The next verse. Then you will see where I'm going. He said, for the creature was made subject to vanity. not willingly but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope stop i don't know what fruit what fruit do you like best you like mango you like orange okay mangoes do you realize the mango you tasted that you liked that you felt was so sweet that is not how the original mango was. Yeah. You know, let's go back to the scripture. He said, for creature, the creature was made subject to vanity. What's the meaning of that? Have you have you gone to the book of Revelation? Because the book of Revelation reveals that the reason why God created everything was for his pleasure. It means all those things were supposed to reflect him. Reflect to the fullest, fullest extent. Hmm? But the moment the bondage of corruption came on, the, on, on, on creation, God was forced to downgrade the capacity the quality of creation was forced to downgrade it. Yes. And he did that with the hope that the time 
was coming where he will release another set of the sons of God. So the, the moment creation came under the bondage of corruption from the book of Genesis chapter 2, the full potential of creation could no longer be seen. Do you still remember? I know, no need to take you there. Do you still remember that there were a few men that had the authority to regulate creation? People like Joshua. He could give a decree and the sun stood. Huh? Do you still remember when Jesus came, he could speak to the wind and the wind will cease. He could speak to the waves, the waves will Do you remember that when Deborah was, was in battle, the Bible says that the stars fought from their courses. Who, I know you don't believe that the, the stars can be weapons. The reason why you cannot believe that is because of the bondage of corruption. The potential of creation was downgraded. But it's the sons of God that is when they come that the full capacity that is captured in the physical creation Are you there? Now, this manifestation of the sons of God will partially begin to experience fulfillment in our time. And the ultimate manifestation is when Jesus comes in the millennial reign to reign. Can you see that factory, factory reset that took place? Is the bondage of corruption that was lifted. When witches want to cast a spell, they go to the river. They do enchantments on the river. They do enchantments on physical things. And those things obey their instructions and they channel them against you. The reason why creation is obeying them is because creation is in bondage. You are the one that is supposed to regulate it. But the sons of God have not matured. Because they have not matured, creation doesn't want to obey the bidding of witches. But it is compelled by that bondage so to do. We have decided to remain immature, not to grow in the things of God. We think that the reason why Jesus died is so that you can prosper. Prosperity is a consequence of alignment. It's not really a message. Say so when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... All other things will happen to you. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord his God, and on his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his foot in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth. It's a consequence. It's a consequence of alignment. The consequence of alignment the ark of god killed Uzzah because david and the people trying to bring the ark into the city forgot the divine order associated with the transportation of the ark and then after Uzzah died they were looking for somebody that if he dies they will not cry they now say obededon is the person so they drop the axe the ark in his house Say if if this one dies, there's, there's no problem. The man, they dropped the ark in his house, not for good reasons. The guy now discovered how to interact with the God of the ark, and he was worshiping him, respecting him. In fact, the whole household he sanctified them. They began to give praise quietly, and then the result of that alignment was prospering. The moment, oh my, I don't have time. That's the result. Then they now heard again that the ark has made the man prosper. Instantly, they came out. It's a result of alignment. Don't look for what is not lost. It was not Adam's post that fell in the Garden of Eden. 
It was not his pocket that became, it's not the coins he carried. It was the opportunity for him to function in God's kingdom that he no longer had access to. If you align yourself with that kingdom, you will prosper. You will prosper. And he say whatsoever he lays his hand upon to do. That, that, that means, like me now, I'm not a businessman. I'm in ministry. But I have prospered. Do you understand? So all of us don't need to be business people to prosper. We don't need to be chasing money to prosper. All, all of us. Meanwhile, there are those among us that have the anointing and calling from God to, to that economic area. But all of us, if we are aligned with God, where he has placed you, you will prosper. It's a consequence of alignment. We are not mature, so we are looking for what is not lost. But when the sons come, they want to be led by God. They don't have an agenda. They don't have what they are looking for. All they are looking for is what God is looking for. The same way Satan was building a civilization through people that had his image, God wants to reproduce sons of God that we have his image. And that we mature in the things of God. That is only what the Spirit of God leads them to do that they will do. Those guys, those guys will manifest God. I told you that anything that has the hold of your heart is what your life reflects. It says that creation was made subject to vanity. And it was not that creation was willing to come under bondage, but it was by reason of him. That means it was God, the regulator, that downgraded creation. In the hope that something will happen. What is that thing? Verse 21. Yeah? Because creation itself also shall be delivered from what? From the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The earnest expectation. What creation is waiting for? Creation wants to be liberated. And the sons of God will come with the glory of God. Why? Because they will be yielding to the spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will be at liberty to manifest His fullness, His glory. The things He wants to do, the civilization He wants to bring, the things He wants to build in the earth. He will be at liberty to do it. And when the sons of God come with that glory, then creation will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into that glorious liberty of the sons of God. The witches will remain strong in your family. Until one among you rises in the stature of the sons of God. The moment that guy shows up on the scene. Manifesting the glory of God. Manifesting the hand of God. Manifesting the spirit of God. Suddenly. Suddenly. The family will be delivered from the strangled hold. And the limiting powers of witchcraft. That have put limitations on the destinies of men and they will have the opportunity to maximize their actualization just because one of the sons of God shows up so the question is are you the one who is to come or should we expect another the darkness will continue creation will keep groaning until these guys that carry the image of God, these guys that the Spirit of God has colonized their heart, these guys that have yielded in their heart to the Spirit of God to become a theater for Him to display His glory. Once they show up, then you begin to see the symptoms of the bondage of corruption will start becoming swallowed up by the glory that their liberty in Christ Jesus is beginning to reflect oh and if we are a million people that are operating like that you begin to see urban renewers oh if you are if we are 20 million people in kenya that begin to operate like that then you begin to see 
that Kenya will be aligned into God's prophetic program the things that God wants to implement the things that God conceived about Kenya in those days it will begin to manifest in free course and the bondage of, of corruption that is on the economy that is on the Kenya shilling <laughs> it will be broken so the world is waiting for us the earth creation is groaning is groaning is groaning hallelujah hallelujah finally let me tell you my own story sorry i couldn't go into philippians uh, i wanted to show you a technology a software a software through which god upgrades us from glory to glory to glory such that one day you will come and look at yourself in the mirror and you cannot imagine how this person is the one doing this thing. And then you will know that it's not by power. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This is an earthen vessel. But what is manifesting is glory. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. Because his glory has started manifesting through your vessel. No, no, no. No time. There were necromancers in my family. And if you have labored in deliverance and you have been schooled by Jesus, you will notice that the witchcraft that is done in the dry land, in the desert, on the mountain top, is not as powerful as witchcraft that is done in the forest and in the graveyards. I don't have time to explain. I'm just telling you by experience, okay? No explanations. The witchcraft that is done on land. Is not as terrible as the witchcraft that is done from the water. Are you following? And the witchcraft that is done from the grave is the highest that there is. And that is what is called necromancy. Where people consult the dead. Where people believe in the ancestors. Do they do that in Kenya? The ancestors. <laughs> so my people, my people are necromancers. There is a parable that is told among my people. That if a necromancer should fight you, there are only two ways you can survive. That you cannot win, but you can survive. The first way is that your feet should never touch the ground. That means you must never be barefooted. Because the moment your feet touches the ground, it doesn't matter if it is in Spain or in Swaziland you will appear on the mirror and if they stab you in that mirror you will die on the ground the second thing you need to do to ensure that you survive a necromancer is that you should not drink water don't drink water because the moment you drink water It will appear on the screen on the crystal ball you ca you can appear in a calabash in the shrine and he can see you ah yeah okay he has added weight he has added weight
strange occurrences began to take place strange things began to happen in my family when I say strange I mean strange it defies medicine it defies every palliative possible just like the madman of Gadara say no one can bind him no not with chains there's nothing you bring that will work and then when my dad died I said I'm going to look for God if I don't find him I will not come back I went to the cold north of Nigeria and I located a mountain after work I'll come back, climb the mountain, five o'clock. I'll come back, 11, 12 in the night. Tomorrow, I climb, come back, 11, 12 in the night. Next tomorrow, with fasting. I was there in January, ending February, March, April, May, June, July. August fasting some days it was 24 hours fasting I was growing lean like an AIDS victim because I've told myself if I don't find God I will not go back home again what are you going back to to a place where necromancers have mastered what do you want to build in that kind of an environment august one two three four five six seven eight then god now spoke and said i can see that you are praying that's what god told me I said, what, what are you talking about? I've been here since January. You know, I was not taught. That was why I was confused. God has an appointment for every man. The day you become serious and you start keeping appointments with God, then he will now look at his calendar and give you an appointment. If you get weary before that appointment date and stop the spiritual exercise, you have missed it. The reason why he came to tell me that I can see you are praying is that I should not think that his, his non-response was not equivalent, was equivalent to the fact that he's not seeing me. The thing is, I have not yet arrived at the appointment date. So he cannot show up. Are you there? I continue. And one day I came from work. I removed my, my suit. Normally, I'll remove it, throw it on the bed, and run. Even if I have a tie on and I'm late, I run to the mountain. You see me running. 264 days. Came, took my suit off, threw it on the bed to run away. Then I noticed I could not move. I couldn't. The ability to lift. I couldn't lift my leg from the ground. So I cried to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I'm under attack. He didn't answer me. And I started feeling hot. So since I could move my knee, I lay on the ground. 
That was the only motion I could make. Then I said, okay, Jesus, if you are the one in this room that I cannot see you, this heat I'm seeing, let it come on my legs. So the thing came there. In those days, I was a classroom teacher. I taught for that mass. So I calculated the probability that it was God and told him that according to probability, this is, this is the percentage possibility that it is you that did that. Sorry, can you move that thing here? The heat moved and came on my stomach. I calculated it again. I said, is it possible to move it here? He, he now moved it. I said, okay. I'm sorry. Oh. These questions I'm asking you is not because I doubt. Oh. It's just, you know, as I was still trying to explain, then he showed me, he allowed me to see one of the angels. If I had my, my legs in place, I would have run away. Because it's not a sight that you want to see. It's terrible. I tried to shout. I noticed I was shouting inside. But nobody outside heard the shout. <laughs> Do you know when they released me? You know when I came back from work now? I came back from work 5 o'clock to run to the mountain. My tie was still on me. It was 3 a.m. that they released me with my tie. Then I put my leg on the ground. I came out of the room. I was still on earth. I went outside. Take it. I'm still. I'm still here. Then I slept without food. And I did not feel hungry. I went to work, came back again, and then they came again. This time, I knew there were angels. So, I was not as afraid as I was the first time. My life of worship changed. They released me again that day, 3 o'clock. But, there was one among them that comes with revelations. That one showed me my future. And as they are showing it, I'm writing it. Then there are some that will show you and say, don't write this one. Don't say this one. I went to church on Wednesday. And when I got to church, the, the praise and worship people were singing and then I lifted up my hands to, to worship. And as I did like this, it was as if I was removing a curtain. And I began to see the future. Till that service ended, I don't know what the pastor preached. I don't know who sat by my side. I was not in that place. I began to see things by the Holy Ghost. Guess what? From that time, I started knowing how the angels communicate. Because of that knowledge, I began to operate in signs and wonders. Guess what? I went back to visit my sister after a long time. And when I came to her house, the next day, her cook walked up to her and said she has resigned. She was a witch. They did not know. But the moment I came there, mm, she knew she would die. She packed her things, left 5 a.m. the next day. The bondage of corruption will continue. The witches will celebrate. They will kill people, take blood, unrestrained until the sons of God begin to emerge. I didn't know why she left. and I, My sister was sad. So I now went to pray. And then I saw it. But I didn't know how to tell her. And I did not tell her what happened. I went back to the north. And I began miracle ministry. Signs and wonders. But you know what? 
when I started the prayer, it was not angels I wanted to meet. It was five years later, after the ministry of signs and wonders, that I realized, uh -uh, that prayer I did, was it angels I was praying to encounter? So I started the prayer again. It was in the fifth year. That, that fifth year that I started the prayers again. I moved it again for another two years. That's when Jesus came to me the first time. He spoke to me for nine seconds about the youth of Nigeria. And from 10 to 12 years of my life, the meaning of my life was what he told me for nine seconds. That was the first time Jesus sent me. I hope you know an apostle is someone that Jesus sent. Jesus must appear to you. For 10 years, I hopped from campus to campus, preaching to the youth of my nation. They were getting saved, delivered, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Miracles were taken. I was doing it. People say I'm a foolish person. That campus people don't have money to give you. What you are doing is not sustainable. They did not know it was Jesus that said. In fact, people even insulted me and gave me a name, Campus Apostle. You know what? The necromancers, I went to face them. When I had, I had seen the glory of God, you know why I'm still here? Because they lied. They lied that you can only conquer them if you don't drink. I've been drinking water. But what I came with, they have not seen it before. It's called glory. The people that were supposed to inherit that, that, that shrine, they are speaking in tongues today. Because when the sons of God come, a new civilization will begin in the terrain. I say this to challenge you, that you are the prophet of that family. The day you get serious, things will change. But if you continue like this, things will remain the way they are. The earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. So let me speak in parables because some of my relatives are following me. There was a necromancer that was on my case. He wanted to cut me off. I said, okay. I started doing what I did during that fast. I started it again. The fight continued for three years. I was in a church service like this where praying praying and the way the anointing came upon me and I was instructed speak so from the pulpit the, the people who I was leading in prayer thought it was them I was prophesying on they were not aware that God had given me the authority to, to end the reign of necromancy and I began to speak about the end of necromancy I cast it I commanded this altar to wither and fall. I didn't know that that utterance had potency. So many men died because of that utterance. Tonight, God has asked me to speak tonight, to speak. There's a song God gave Theophilus when we went to Mombasa. Buna Yesu Asifiwe 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 Buna Yesu Asifiwe we are going to worship with that song in a moment of time before I speak. 
Rise up on your feet tonight. Something will shift. Something will shift tonight. Something will shift tonight.
Can we pray to him right now? I say you don't need to wait for the time of our children. We are ready. We are willing. We want to know your will and to manifest your glory. Make me your instrument. Make me your vessel. Cry to him. He's desperate about our generation. He's desperate about our generation. Don't wait for my children. So carry. It has the authority to end the bondage of corruption in your family. The things that have limited that family from attaining to her God-ordained potential. It will be swallowed up. Tonight is that, man, if that night where God will equip his sons and his daughters for manifestation. Many of you that have been tarrying before his presence, he will begin to release you. Kenya will experience the touch of a new aroma 
because the glory of God will begin to fill the land. Do not wait for the time of our children. We are willing to serve your will, O oh God. Iskebo mila antoria lebaki soseli. Oh, we give you glory. We exalt your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now listen. 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 You know, today is the last day. We'll be going back tomorrow. So don't leave until you receive the full package. I have a blessing for you. There are three things the Lord has commanded me to do. Number one is healing. Now, so, listen, anyone sick here has a right to be healed. Are you with me? All right, follow these instructions. If your challenge is an eye condition, you will lay your hands on your eyes. Don't do it now yet. Just wait for the instructions. If your challenge is an ear condition, maybe one of your ears are deaf, take this finger, put it in the deaf ear, and close it completely. If you brought a totally deaf person into the congregation, help the person close the two ears. If it is an issue of paralysis, lay your hand where the paralysis is. Exactly. If the person that is sick in your family, you could not bring the person here, take your phone number, your phone, call the person now. When you call the person, get and you get the person, tell the person you are in a healing service and you want him or her to partake of the healing service. Then keep the phone running while I pray. Right? If you have, if it is a growth, fibroid, cancer, look for where you can touch the growth and put your hand there. Exactly. Are you with me? If you brought someone that has a mental issue, just lay your hands on the person's head while we pray. Things will come out of people's bodies today. Did you get that? Then, I'm going to say in the name of Jesus, then you will say, Amen. We'll do that seven times. As we are doing it, things will begin to break. After that, then I'll start praying for the sick. Follow the instructions carefully. If yours is an eye condition, put it there. If it's a lung condition, put it. A kidney condition. You have pains on your leg. Exactly. If you notice there's a curse on your life, money doesn't stay on your hand. Show those hands to God. Show the hands to God. Are you, are you clear? That amen you will give is the loudest you can afford. Oh my God. You know what? Wait. Jesus is smiling. That's why I said, oh my God. He's smiling. He is happy. <laughs> you know, my message was in Philippians chapter 2. I, I didn't succeed in preaching it. I tried. So he is smiling at me. That. Meanwhile, the message he gave me is him that gave me. I was writing it. I said, hey, this. this. Then I now came here. He didn't allow me to preach it. So the reason why he was smiling was because I actually preached what was on his mind. So he's happy. Korea Masi Kekamo Salabola. In the name of Jesus. You know when you 
say amen like that, it gives me an opportunity to see in the spirit. I see a woman. This woman has found it extremely difficult to be able to secure sleep in the night. She has not had a sound sleep for a long time. If she makes, if, if, if she falls asleep and there's a little noise, she'll wake up and she'll not be able to sleep again. Sleep is her problem. Oh woman, if you are in this congregation, come here. If that woman is in this congregation, make your way and come. Today is the last night. Don't be in a hurry. Are you there? Receive what God wants to give you. Oh woman that finds it difficult to sleep at night, come forward. It is the Lord's will for the yoke that you have carried for a long time to be destroyed. Thank you, Father. So why is she crying? Why is she crying? <laughs> now listen to me. Listen, listen. There are two of you standing here. Your case is an emergency. And the Lord will begin to attend to you by himself. Two of you. He will come, he will pass in front. He will pass in front of you in a moment of time. And he will attend to your case. There are two of you like that. Your case is already coming. It's already coming. It's already coming. It's already coming. It's coming strong. He wants to take that yoke. He wants to take that yoke away. Okay, he has begun to take the yoke away. He's taking it 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 away. Father, in the name of Jesus, these strange spirits with which these women have been afflicted, I destroy their powers over the lives of these women. In the name of Jesus Christ. Restless spirits. I terminate your mission. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woman, come. Come like this. I'm seeing you in the center of two witches. Father, let her be released from despair. Release her from despair. Release her. Release her. Release her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, those of you that are on your feet, you can go back. The ones on the ground, leave them. When the Lord finishes with them, they will recover themselves and then they will go back. Don't force anybody to go back that is on the ground, okay? The Lord is still walking. He's still walking. You know, I'm seeing an embarrassing situation. This person that I'm seeing, I don't know, but I have to mention it. Even though I, will, I won't call you out, I will just speak. This person is an adult, but the person wears the bed. It is the spirit of reproach that was used to strike you so that you will lose confidence in yourself. You will lose confidence in the hand of God that is upon you. 
you will lose confidence in that which God wants to do in your life. It is a witchcraft attack. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, I destroy that spell on your life. Let it be broken off your life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name! I see someone that does business here. When you finish trading sometimes, you notice that after counting your money, it's not complete. Where are you? Come. Um, please, interview this. This is a serious case. If I tell you what is happening to you, you will not believe Where is that pastor that was helping me the other day? Let us find out what is going on here. When I the things I say, I, I'm afraid to say them. In all my years in ministry, I've not seen what I just saw now. Eh, pastor, 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 Pastor. Eh, what is going on there? Man's, this man's name is John. It's John. Yes. Okay. So he's saying whatever you're saying about him is very true. Uh -huh. He has what? an actual incident where he has gone home with 70,000 shillings. He went home with 7,000 shillings? 70. 70,000 70, shillings. Yes. And it literally disappeared. Now, ah, if I tell you what I'm saying, you will not believe. I don't even know how to continue because the things I'm seeing, I've not seen them before. How is going to solve this problem? Listen to me. I saw a woman. This woman went to look for a child from the devil. The woman is in this congregation. She went to look for a child from the devil. Oh, woman. Jesus has sent me to you. Don't come here. Don't come out. I don't want anybody to. But when we close, I'm going to be in Bishop's office. I will be there. I'll be sitting there for five minutes waiting for you to come to me. I have something to tell you. You went to look for a child from the hand of Satan many years ago. This thing I'm telling you is a secret you have kept in your soul. Woman, I will be sitting in the office for five minutes. I will set my watch. If it's five minutes and you don't come, it has been, I have done what the Lord has instructed. I will walk away. Your window will be for five minutes. Yes, Pastor, what about that lady? So, yeah, this is Sharon. Okay, Sharon. Sharon is in manufacturing and she works together with her uncle. Okay. But there is not a single time her money adds up at all. Yeah, it, it will never add up. Yeah. If I tell you that I'm seeing a spirit, a spirit that was sent to you people from the water, you will not believe me. That's why I don't even know what to say and what not to say. But let me ask God to give me a sign so that you will believe first. I need you to believe first. And now you, are, you have not believed, so wait. <laughs> if I am saying the truth, eh, you people, if I am saying the truth about a spirit from the water, I will ask the Holy Ghost to anoint two people here as a sign. Okay? That is if I am saying the truth. Father, if what I have told them is what you showed me, anoint, anoint two people. This is one. 
and two is there. You see, there is no way I can influence this, this thing that happened. And I did it for your own belief. A spirit. Or I can leave you for one year. Maybe next year when we come. Then, if we leave it till one year, your condition will be worse, far worse than what it is today. Come. See if you what I will do is, I'll, I'll touch you here. Huh? I'll touch you here. Okay. I'll touch you here. And here. Stand there. So, you see, one of you, my hand is on one of you. My hand has not left that person. My hand has not left that person. And you will soon know the person. Father, Show me that one that my hand is still upon. That one that my hand is still upon. That one that my hand is still upon. That one. Now, listen to me. So that touch, I touched you has relieved, has delivered you from that woman. In the name of Jesus! The business person here, you had three doors open to you. Three. You were excited. And you began to make plans to enter the doors. And the three doors that opened to you got shut. Yeah, go on, go, go on, sit down. You have the case. The three doors that opened to you got shut mysteriously. Where are you? Three doors opened to you. Before you could access them, the three doors got shut mysteriously. Find out. But don't please don't cry, don't cry. Because if you cry, we'll all start crying and say, Oh my God. <laughs> How many times have we shouted Amen? As if he wait. Yeah? Four. As if he wait. Yes, what happened there? Three doors for business open. Open to her. And when the doors open. Not, none of the door that succeeded. None of them. If I tell you what is behind it, you will not believe. Yeah? We, I'm seeing somebody coming out. Is it? Does it apply to you? Yeah, go that way. Go that way. Go that way. Now, the moment they finish talking, you tell me what they are saying. Now, is it true? Yes, sir. This woman here got uh, a visa to go to Canada, okay. which lately it failed. And also, is uh, a son uh, got a green card. A green card. Yes, which also failed. Failed. And also in got a contract uh, for construction, and also it it's is failed. failed. At least we have confirmed it. Yeah? So this is Myra. Myra has been getting opportunities, ideas, even funding, but it never really gets to fruition. It never gets it to yes, Now, this giant, this giant, find out from Don't, you want to go? Okay, go, go. 
this giant. Find out from this giant what is happening. Yeah, yeah. What is the giant saying? He has, he has, he runs an agricultural uh, software, an app okay. for now. He has been trying to get investors, but he never really gets them at all. I've heard your cry, but the one I'm talking about, three doors, and the person could not enter. Somehow, I just like you, so I will pray for your app. Okay, now. Stretch your hand in that direction and destroy the yoke of the devil. If I tell them what is happening, they will not believe. Destroy that yoke. Destroy it. Destroy it. That limiting power of witchcraft spirit at work in your family the limiting power of witchcraft spirit at work in your family I challenge it and I command that yoke to break 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 in the name of Jesus I put an end to this darkness loose them There are two people in the congregation that were supposed to join that refused to join. Father, in the name of Jesus, those two in the congregation that also have the same witchcraft challenge that have not joined, I ask that you also deliver them. 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 Deliver them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Number what now? Five. You know, one of you here, the reason for your problem is something that was buried in your family compound. I know you don't believe that. <laughs> you don't believe that. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one from that family where something was buried that is regulating the destinies of men in the name of Jesus put your hand on that one by a touch of the anointing show me that one by a touch of the anointing 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 as if he now do me a favor ushers ushers do me a favor, all those people, bring them up the stage here. I need to conduct a deliverance for them. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. I have prayed for this day for long. Ushers, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Is it possible? Oh, it's not possible. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? I use you as a point of contact to destroy what was used to bedevil your family and I command this effect on your life, on your destiny to be destroyed, to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command this effect to be broken from your life in the name of Jesus. Come, come. That which was programmed in your family. Tonight I use you as a point of contact. To destroy it. To destroy it. To destroy it. To destroy it. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I release your destiny. I 
I release you from where you were tied, from where you were kept in bondage. Tonight is the day of your liberty. Let the yoke break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. I lose you from where you were kept. I lose you in the name of Jesus. 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 I draw you out from that place. Let the yoke break. Let it break. Let it break. In the name of Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just touch. Let it break. Yeah, so I lose you from where you were tied. In the name of Jesus, the witchcraft. Don't in your family. It loses the ability to manipulate your destiny from tonight. Just a thought. Lose her. upon you it will come now it will come now it will come now something is coming it's coming it's coming strong it is coming strong it will come 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 your lives will be transformed your lives will be transformed your lives will be transformed I'm seeing God pull someone out he's pulling one of you out pulling one of you out pulling you out pulling you out pulling you out it's pulling you it's pulling you it's pulling you So we'll do the last one now. Ooh. I see the spirit of death. Someone's name has been taken to a wrong place. Death has been sent to apprehend you. Father, that one carrying death around by a touch of the anointing. Locate that one. 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 Holy Ghost! Let me touch her head. Just the head, just the head. Eh? If you find a person, I want to touch the head, just the head. You don't come to the house of God to dance. You come here to live. The merchandise that we have is life. It's life. It's life. Come. Come. The merchandise we have is life. The merchandise we have is life. So leave. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
So put your hand there now. Then I will, I will speak. When I speak, miracles will begin to take place. And it will take place. It will continue till 12 midnight. 12 midnight. Yeah, 12 midnight this night. At home, some miracles will still be taking place when you get home. Yeah. It is by tomorrow, next tomorrow, we will know what has happened. Put your hand there for sight, for hearing, for paralysis, for asthma, for ulcer. Put your hand there. And those of you that are online, you can follow suit. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you because of your excellent majesty, because of your power, because of your grace. Thank you for your willingness to reach the people, to transform lives, to equip people for the work of the ministry, to equip people for destiny. And tonight, in your name, I take authority over blinding spirits. Blinding spirits be bound. Blinding spirits be bound. Be bound in the name of Jesus. I take authority over deafening spirits. Deafening spirits be bound in the name of Jesus. I come against growths. I come against fibroids. I come against tumors. I come against cancers. And I command you, dry up, die. Dry up, die. Dry up, die. Dry up, die. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against every form of paralysis. Numbness. Death in the body. Spirit of paralysis, be bound. Be bound. Come out of your bodies in the name of Jesus. Come out of your bodies in the name of Jesus. Be bound. Be bound. Come out of your bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that yoke of paralysis. Break. 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 In Jesus mighty name. I come against pains. Long conditions. Pains. Migraines. Hear the word of God. I command you. Come out, 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 come out in the name of Jesus. I address those online, those connecting by the phone. It doesn't matter what affliction from paralysis to 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 to. to, to to losses in thoughts, losses in thoughts, I arrest it. I arrest it. blood conditions. I arrest you in the name of Jesus. I break your yoke. I destroy your power. I disarm you. Go in the name of Jesus. Why? I send healing your way. I send deliverance your way. Let the yoke be broken. Let it 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 be broken. In Jesus' name. So I say to you, eyes. See in the name of Jesus. I say to you, ears. Hear in the name of Jesus. I say to you, pain. Go in the name of Jesus. I say to you, long condition. Go in the name of Jesus. I say to you, pain on the back. Go in the name of Jesus. I say to cancer. I say to asthma. Dissolve. 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 Paralysis. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you because of the supply of the healing anointing. The supply of healing. The supply of deliverance. Oh, the healing has started. It has started. It has started. It has started. Thank you. Thank you because the yokes 
are being broken. Thank you. Because the deliverance has been delivered. It's been delivered to your people. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 All right. So you have five minutes to check your body. And those of you that are online, please communicate with our DEX officers and type out the miracle that has taken place and give us a feedback. And those of you that called some people on the phone, please begin to communicate with them right now. If you notice that there is a change, you come this way. I will take a few testimonies and then that which I have received from the Lord, I will give you. If you, if you study yourself and you know that you have a miracle, you come this way. You come this way. So this is the rule. If nothing happens, say nothing. And if something happens, don't keep quiet. The rest of you, take your seat. If nothing happens, say nothing. If something happens, don't keep quiet. Yes, Guess what happened to the young man? He's Moses. His name is Moses. His name is Moses. Okay. His, uh, he couldn't hear, and he, now he's able to hear. He couldn't hear from one of the ears? Yes, sir. And now the ear has opened. He's able to hear. Now, let us hear from Moses. Moses, what happened to you? Uh, for me... Don't preach. Don't preach. Okay, I'm not I know preaching. you want to say something. Yeah. No. I once was blind, and yes. now I see. That's how they say it. For my ears always have something that when uh, there is more noises, I don't hear well. But uh, for me, I've been listening for you for so long, and I have encountered you in the spirit. And I said into my heart that I will come here and I press like the woman that had 12, 12 years of life. You are preaching. Blood. You are preaching. You are preaching. Okay, see. take the mic. Take the mic. Take okay. I'm what sorry. happened to you? My ears. The ears has opened. Yeah. But I wanted to no, greet no, no, you. No, no, no. To greet you. Thank you. Please. please take the mic. Take the mic. He wants to preach to us. Wait for me. Wait for me there. Huh? Sir, this is sorry. This is Belinda. Belinda. She has an online Let, testimony. Wait, wait, wait. There's someone. Okay. There's someone. Because of an accident or something, you have had a sustained pain. A sustained pain on your spinal area. And Jesus is telling me that he has healed you. I'm waiting for that person here. Yes. This is Belinda. Belinda. Her uncle Andrew has been having an issue with her head, suspected to be a brain problem. A brain problem. Which has been having, causing a lot of headaches. A lot so of headaches. She called him. They were praying together as you are praying. Yes. And now he says the head thing is has gone. gone. Where's Where's your uncle? He's in Nairobi, Kitengela. Nairobi. Um. Um. What's the transport fare to go to that place? From here. I think from here to Nairobi is 150 and then from, from Nairobi So Jesus did not need their transport fare. Jesus just sent the man the mirror. Hallelujah. Is he on the phone? Okay, he's, he's not on the phone anymore. All right, but you called him for confirmation? All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Where is the person with a spinal cord? There's a pain and... You, you have been relieved. Check, check the spinal cord. Check it. This one, check. sir, is, is a spinal cord. Yeah. He, he had a spinal cord uh, pains for one here. And one here. And when you are praying, the pain left. Okay, that's the person I'm looking for. So, the Lord has sent me to you, so wait for me. Huh? Oh. I'm looking for someone that one of the eyes... One of the eyes has started becoming dim. So one eye, if you close this eye, this one sees. If you close this one, then God touched. The person I'm talking about, the person I'm talking about, God touched your eyes. One eye sees better than the other eye. 
and God has touched the person's eyes and the person is somewhere in the congregation I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for that person Yes, what happened to that sister? There is this one. She's Stella, sir. Stella. She was born asthmatic, and but as you are praying, the thing left her. How? What feeling did you have? Heat, even it's still currently. Happening. There's heat on your chest. chest. Wait, let me run a test. A quick test. This is. We we'll call it the healing test. She has been healed. Who are these people? Okay. They will tell us who they are. I will take maybe three other testimonies so that I can release what the Lord has sent me. Eesh. Yes, what's going on here? Uh, this is this is Jerry. She's Jerry? Saying, yes. Okay. She has been having a problem where when she's praying in tongues, she can feel something moving in her head. In her head. So she was not able to do that comfortably, but now she's just tried and she's able to do that. You you, you don't feel that in again. Good. Stand. Don't go. Yes. So this is Lily. Okay. She has a, her brother called Harrison. He had a problem. Harrison. He had a problem with his eye. They prayed over the phone as you were praying, and yeah. it is gone. The, he has a problem with his eye. You called him yeah. on your phone. Yes, he was operated. One eye. He, he was operated. One eye. He, he, don't, he does not have. No, 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 no. Do you want me to hear what you are saying? Yeah. Speak. That thing you are speaking into is called microphone. Yes. Speak so that we can hear you. Yeah, my I'm looking for some people. God has sent me to some people. My brother had one eye. He was the one who I was being operated. He is using just one eye for his light heart. Light heart. So he has one eye. Yeah. One of the eyes that was operated upon. Yeah, he does not have it. He doesn't have it. They, they yeah. removed the eye. Yeah. So he has only one. Yeah. Okay. And, and that one had a problem. Last that one had a problem. Uh, last month he went for an operation. Went for another operation on that one. Yeah. And then there was a time he, he called us and told us he just want to kill himself. He wants to kill himself? Yeah, because of the problem. Because of the eye. Yeah. So you called him today? Yeah. So what happened after the prayer? After prayer, I called him again and asked him what had happened. And then he told me that he is okay. The, that eye, the one eye, Yeah. there's an improvement on the sight in that eye. Yeah. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My question now is why did they remove the other one? They would have left it. Why did they remove that one? He would have had his two eyes restored today if they had left that one eye in the socket. Even if he's completely blind, they would have left it. Okay. I'm already touched. Ask your brother. Call him. Ask him. Apart from the healing, what else does he want? But only one. Only one thing. Ask him. Yes? This is called the leg. Okay. Uh, he had an eye, uh, eye condition and as you're praying, uh, one eye has been healed, one is remaining. So one, was he totally blind when he came here? Yeah, yeah, he was not seeing well. He couldn't see? Yes, sir. So one eye can see now? Clearer than the other. Okay, one is clearer than the other? Yes. Okay. So, come, come, come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So is which one is clearer than which one? This one is clearer. Okay. So do me a favor. Close this one. Help me, help me. Stretch your hand in this direction. And ask the Lord. Restore his sight. Believe what you are praying. Restore. Restore it. Restore it. Restore it. Blinding spirit, hear my voice. Let this eye go. Okay, conduct a test and give me the result. Conduct no, don't don't leave here. The two eyes, yeah, something like that. Tell me exactly how it is. If it is still like it was before, I will pray again. Uh, okay, I came with my eyes. One was they were both ruined by the TB I had. They were both ruined by the tuberculosis tuberculosis that you had yes but one but one is has clear. improved yes it's clear yes the other one is not the other one is not this one is still not yes okay so what we will do now before we share the grace we will ask for you to give us an update huh the lord is still working on you so but before we share the grace <laughs> This is Alan. Okay, Alan. His mother has been having impending stroke. Stroke? Yes. So when you prayed, Alan believed together with you. Yeah. And now he called his mother and she's fine. She, she she's, has... She's totally so pain-free. Yes. Where is the mother? Kakamega. That's Where? Western Kenya. How, what's the transport money to go to that place? 1,500. 1,500. 1,500. Yes. Jesus, they don't need transport. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There's going to be an increase in your life. The Lord sent me to you. Who is the person with the pain on the back that got healed? He's here, sir. He's called Brian. He had four accidents. Four accidents. Which affect 10 days backbone yeah the spinal cord yeah. the spinal cord and now he's healed he's healed the pain yeah. has gone the, pain has gone. the lord the lord sent me to you too there's a lady where okay thank you thank you father thank you father thank you father yes what happened to okay have you called him what does he want? His door to be open. He wants his door to be open. And, That's all. And it's one, one, only one. Okay. So that anointing is for him. What happened to this one? This one, sir. Uh, now wait. Wait. So the angels have touched me here. So whenever they touch me here, you know, I told you I've le I know how to communicate with them. You know what this means? Because they touched me 12 times. There are 12 people here called to be prophets. God will anoint them. Say what you want, just one thing. No, don't tell me, tell God. In 12 months, what month are we now? October. So, till October next year. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I asked for an intervention in 12 months. Twelve months, sister. Yes, what happened? This one, sir, uh, she has believed as you are praying, and she called the parents back at home. They had a condition of uh, urinalysis for a long time, and right now the grandfather is completely healed. The, the grandfather is healed. Where's the grandfather? Where's your grandfather? He's in USA. USA, he called USA. And the healing. There's an evangelist on this road. The anointing God is giving you tonight will give you the ability to cast out devils easily. So the anointing is coming already. It's coming. Yes, um, lady, you that got healed, come. That like your grandfather got healed. If you agree to walk in holiness, sexual purity, I will give you something. Do you accept? Yes. Okay. Wait for the Lord. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. I'm looking for someone. Okay, the person is close here. Father, in the name of Jesus, show me the one for which you asked me to stand here. Okay, it's coming already. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Let that yoke, let that yoke be lifted. Let it be lifted. Let it be lifted in the name of Jesus. Yes, what happened to this young man? This is born fast. He has been having an allergy in the eyes. Allergy in the eyes. And as you are praying, he has felt strength that has come in his it eyes. It has come into his eyes. Thank you, Jesus. We call the healing permanent 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 yes permanent yes wait just look at me keep looking keep looking keep looking keep looking something will clothe you to clothe you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to clothe clothe her 
Claude. 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 Her spirit is open. Claude. Okay. It's coming. It's coming stronger. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Clothe this one. Clothe her. Clothe her. Clothe her. Clothe her. Let it come. 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 Let it come stronger. Okay. Yeah. He said, Calemos. Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. There's a fire burning. There's a fire burning. And this fire is burning in somebody's womb. In some... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. A spell was casted on your womb. Come. Come. And the Lord... He brought me here so that the spell can break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is broken. Osha, help me. Tap her stomach like this. Tap like this. Harder. Uh huh. Stop. Okay. So, it's broken. Now, this man with glasses. What? What happened to him? Find out. I want to pray, and give you. The Lord has given me liberty to pray this prayer. I don't pray it. Anyhow. What I have is that I should I should release it. But listen, if you don't, if you cannot develop the discipline needed for you to retain it, it will go. But me, I will release if you are ready to cultivate the discipline, it will remain. What happened to this man? This. Okay. Yeah? He had an ear issue, but now it is healed. He had an ear hearing issue? Yes, sir. But it's healed? Yes, sir. Can I go down? You, what happened to you? You were using this? One eye. One eye? Yeah. That means you can't see from... Yeah, I can't see far. But now everywhere is so clear. Now, I can't hear what she said. Please, okay. find out what she's saying. Please. Yeah. It's a young man that I came for. And the Lord will reveal him. He will touch him. You will not be able to contain the anointing. That young man. Now, this young guy here, what's wrong with him? She, he, this young man and asthmatic, and as he was coming, he couldn't even breathe, and as you are praying, he is totally healed. He's healed? Yeah. You can breathe? Breathe in. Out. In. Out. Asthma. Yeah, yeah. You are healed. Listen. Listen. In the healing service, you follow instructions. Don't do what you want to do. You, why are you here? My eyes. Uh huh. What? 
what's happened to your eye? I can see a little bit better. You can see a little bit better. You used to use these spectacles for how long now? Since primary school. Since primary school. And there's an improvement. Can we give the Lord glory? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for perfection. For perfection. Perfection. In the name of Jesus, let her complete sight be restored to her. In Jesus' name. All right. It's time for me to bless. All you need to do is raise your right hand. Not two hands, just... The Lord will walk through this congregation in the next few minutes. He will begin to walk through the congregation. He will begin to walk through the congregation. His hand will begin to come on the congregation. It will begin to intensify it will begin to intensify. Focus on him. Don't focus on anybody. It will begin to intensify. It will begin to intensify. He will be coming through. He will be coming through. He will be coming through. Oh my God. He will be coming through. He will be coming through. He will be coming through. He will be moving through the congregation. He will be moving through the congregation. I see a pastor's wife. I see fire on the 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 pastor's wife. You'll be coming true. 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 He'll be coming through. He'll be coming through. He's coming. Now, let me... Father, these are the ministers of the gospel. I ask that your hand of anointing will increase the measure, the measure of your walking, the measure of your walking upon their lives. Increase the measure. 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 Those of you here, those of you here, it will come here. It will come to you here. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, increase the measure. 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 Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase the measure. Increase the measure. Today. Those of you here, those of you here, he will increase the measure. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. It's already coming. It's coming. Increase it. 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 Increase the measure. 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Increase the measure. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it in the name of Jesus. I'm coming. Increase the measure. Increase the measure. Increase the measure. Increase the measure. Did you bring the oil I asked you to bring?
There. Those of you there. Those of you there. Father, increase the measure. 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 Increase it. There's something I want to give you. Come. You know, the apostolic ministry has measures, has levels. So there is a measure that will come upon you from this day henceforth. Let grace, such grace as the Lord has entrusted to me, be available to you from this day henceforth in the name of Jesus. Grace. Things will be easier. Things will be easier from today. Things will be easier. They will flow with ease. With ease. Grace. Finances. Open doors to be easier from today. From today. From today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sister. Yeah, you with specs. Come. Your heart is open. Father, attend to her cry. 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 In the name of Jesus. Attend to her cry in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to pray. The prayer point is simple, such as I have. Give them. Such as I have. Give them. Such as I have. Give your people. Such as I have. Give your people. Such as I have. Give your people. I release a blessing upon your people in the name of Jesus Christ. I release a blessing on your people. I release grace 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 in the name of Jesus.